Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can start building bases in DayZ. By the time you finish watching this video, you will know how to build a fence, a fence gate that opens and closes and can be locked, a watchtower, as well as a flagpole. We'll also go over some general base building tips, as well as some helpful hints for how and where to get the items you need for base building. Most of the items that you need for base building are considered industrial category items and those can be found in any kind of industrial looking area. It could be these storage units or any kind of shed behind a house. If you're just thinking about setting up a base, here is a list of items you should be collecting so that you can do that. You're going to need a rope so that you can build your fence kit. You're going to need any kind of axe that's going to allow you to cut down big trees which will give you wooden logs and those are going to be the posts for our fence. You'll need any kind of shovel that will allow you to dig the posts into the ground and any kind of saw that will allow you to get wooden planks which can be acquired from sawing wooden logs or from a lumber mill taking it straight from the pile and you're going to need nails. Nails show up as boxed nails when you're looting them and when you open it you have just nails. When our fence is built we'll need metal wire and pliers to turn our fence into a fence gate and that will allow it to swivel open and closed and we'll need a combination lock so that we can lock the gate to prevent other players from entering our base. Now with all of our materials gathered We'll go up to any bush and we'll gather a long stick. We'll put the stick in our hand and we'll split it to turn it into short sticks. Now while you're holding at least two short sticks, combine it with a rope and this will allow you to craft a fence kit. You can take your fence kit into your hand and it will give you a prompt to choose your placement. Now this is a part where a lot of people make mistakes I made this mistake when I started playing too. Every fence has a front and a back. And if you can access the back of the fence, you can dismantle it. So if you wanted to build your base inside a building like this, you want to make sure that the wall is facing out. Another thing to keep in mind before we do any placement is that if we're going to make this into a fence gate and we're going to lock it, you have to remember that the lock is going to be on the right side of your placement. And that's important because you can accidentally make the lock unreachable after you put it on the door. So now that we're happy with our placement, you can just place it wherever you want. And now that our fence kit is on the ground, you can open your inventory and you can see the vicinity. It says a fence and it says logs zero out of two. So now we're going to need some wooden logs. Wooden logs can be cut from large trees. This would be considered a big enough tree to give you wooden logs. If the tree is not big enough, your prompt is going to be to gather firewood. You don't want firewood, you want wooden log. And we're just going to do this to get two wooden logs. You can cut a large tree without chopping it down and still get wooden logs from it. You should just be careful because if you do cut a big tree down, it will be lying on the ground like this for a very long time and anybody coming through this area will see that a big tree has been cut down. And that is a big signal to other players that someone is here and they're probably setting up a base nearby. Pick up the wooden log into your hands and walk back to your fence kit. Now you can either go up to the fence kit and get a prompt to attach it or you can open up your vicinity inventory and drag it into the logs slot. With both wooden logs in our fence kit, we can now take out our shovel, look at the logs, and we'll get a prompt to build base. And we can go ahead and do that. And now you'll see we have two posts on either side. Our fence kit goes back on the ground and we can reuse it. And now that our base is built, we can go into our vicinity and we can see we have a lot more options now for what we can put into this fence. We can go ahead and drop our nails into the materials slot. We can also put our wire. And now we need to go collect planks. Before you continue, you should make sure that you have all of the materials to finish this project. 
because the next step will lock us in this base and we need to be able to open the door once it's built. So make sure you have at least metal wire and pliers so you can turn the fence into a gate once we're done building it. If you can't find a lumber mill nearby, you can cut another wooden log off a big tree, hold the saw in your hand and look at the wooden log and you'll get a prompt to craft wooden planks. Each wooden log will give you four planks and to build our fence and fence gate, we're gonna need about 20 planks. The fastest way to get wooden planks is to find any lumber mill. If you're looking at the I Survive map, it's this brown icon with three lines and it's a pile of wooden planks. And this is what it looks like. So with any saw, you can go up to a lumber pile and just start sawing planks off a lumber pile. And doing this will give you more than enough planks that you're gonna need. So now while we're holding our planks, we can go up to the fence and press attach and that will place it on the ground or we can just drag it into the material slot using the inventory menu. Now with everything collected, we can hold a hammer or a hatchet in our hand and it will give us an option to build a lower frame or an upper frame. And now we can start building the actual fence. So we've built the lower frame. Now we're gonna build the upper frame and building those two frames cost us four planks each and a couple of nails. Next, we're gonna build the lower wooden wall and the upper wooden wall. And now we've fenced ourselves into this little room. And this is the part where I was talking about how it's important to have all the materials ready before you do this, because if you don't, you're gonna be locked in this room and the only way out is to dismantle it. Also, if you built the fence facing the wrong way, then the back is gonna be facing out and then anybody who comes to your base can dismantle it. This is why it's important to pick your placement carefully. Now that our wall is built, we're gonna turn this into a fence gate that can open and close. We take our metal wire and we put it into the wire slot for the fence. We take some pliers into our hands and we'll get an option to build a gate. And now you can see the fence opens and closes. Now we don't want anybody to just be able to open and close this. So we're going to attach our combination lock onto this wall. Set the combination that you want and attach it to the wall. And if you remember, as I said earlier, the lock will always attach to the right side when you place the gate. And that is just about making sure that when we come back to our base from the outside, we can access the lock. A general base building tip is that if you have a combination lock on your base, you'll want to give yourself some kind of cover for when you're opening the gate lock. Because sometimes it can take a while to open up your own lock and if you're just sitting there unlocking it, someone can just shoot you while you're opening the base. Sometimes people will even wait until you've unlocked it and then they'll kill you and then they'll just come take your base once you've unlocked it. Another extension you can build on any kind of fence is what's called a platform. Add more planks and nails to your fence and you'll get a prompt to build the platform. With your platform built, you will now get a prompt to build left stairs or right stairs. And this will allow you to look over your wall so you can see or shoot oncoming zombies or people. If building this kind of vantage point interests you, then you might really be interested in learning how to build a watchtower. Building a watchtower is very similar to building a fence. You'll wanna get four short sticks into your hand, combine it with a rope, and one of the options you'll get is to craft a watchtower kit. With the watchtower kit in your hand, you can choose the placement wherever you want. And just like when you're building your fence, the same rules apply for standing in the front and the back of it Anybody who has access to the back of the watchtower can dismantle it. The first step to building your watchtower is to gather four logs. And with four logs in our watchtower and a shovel in our hand, we can go ahead and build base. You'll see we have the four posts here, and now we have a whole bunch of options for what we want to do next. If we want, we can build a right wall, a front wall, a left wall, or the first floor. Building the walls is just like building the fence. You just have to put planks and nails in the slot and build it up. 
It's the same process for building the first floor. We want to put some planks in the plank slot and some nails in the nail slot. And with a hammer in our hand, we should get a prompt to build floor. Then with more planks and more nails, we'll get a prompt to build stairs. And now we've built the first floor to our watchtower. And while we're standing on the first floor, we can open the vicinity inventory and we'll see now it says base 2F and an option to load up four more logs. And that will be to start building up the next story up. Now, one thing that a lot of players have a problem with when it comes to building a watchtower is getting it past this stage. They can't seem to build a second floor. So if you look at this watchtower, the next post going up is obstructed. This watchtower will not be able to go higher than this because the next posts would be clipping into this building. So make sure to give yourself enough clearance away from any buildings, away from any obstructions, so that when you put your logs down for your next floor, you'll have this option to build base. And now in your vicinity, you'll see the watchtower has all the options for the second floor. So now we'll attach some nails and planks to the base 2F and we'll get an option to build another floor. As well, we'll get an option to build another set of stairs. And this is the maximum height for a watchtower. And to really utilize this watchtower, we're going to go ahead and put four more logs into this floor so that we can start building fences around the top floor. We're going to put some planks in the front wall and we're just gonna build a lower frame as well as a lower wooden wall for this frame. And you can see now we have some high ground and some cover. If we wanted, we could peek out and start taking some shots and then duck back behind cover again. And we can do this on all three sides. We can do it on the second floor as well. As well, if you wanted to, you can just put a fence gate in front of your watchtower. You can just press the placement on your fence kit turn it around and place it in front of your watchtower. When it's all fully built, you should have a watchtower that only you have access to. Next, we're gonna be looking at how to build a flagpole for your base. Flagpoles are really good if your base is starting to get really big and you have a lot of storage containers in your base. And the reason is that anytime you store items in a storage container, it has about a two week lifetime before those items will despawn. With a flagpole, it prevents all the items in your containers to not despawn and that lasts about six weeks. And you can just go to your flagpole, interact with it, and that will refresh your timer on all your containers in your base. You don't have to go refresh each container one by one. The only catch is that building a flagpole is one of the most tedious, most difficult things to build in DayZ just because of the sheer amount of resources you need to build one. So just like how we built our other kits, we're going to grab three short sticks and some rope to combine them to make a flagpole kit. With our flagpole kit crafted, we can choose our placement wherever we want. It's important to make sure that you have enough height clearance to build your flagpole. And you want to build it somewhere where the radius around the flagpole is going to reach all of the items in your base because it affects the whole area around the flagpole. So you don't want to go build it off somewhere random. The first step to building our flagpole, we have to put a wooden log into the flagpole kit. Next, you're going to need a sledgehammer and this is for banging the post into the ground. And now with our flagpole mounted, we have to build our support. We need 32 stones and six more logs. To gather the stones, we need to find a big rock like this. They're everywhere. You can hit it with your sledgehammer. It will give you an option to gather large stone. Ideally, you'll be doing this with a pickaxe. And this step is really the most tedious one when it comes to building a flagpole. Since a pickaxe and a sledgehammer are not really that common loot, and you'll probably break a few trying to collect 32 stones. Also, large stones take up a lot of inventory space, and they weigh a lot. Drop your stones in your flagpole, and once you have all 32 stones and 6 wooden logs, you'll take out a shovel, 
and you'll get an option to build support. Next, we're gonna build the pole. So we're gonna need more logs, more nails, a rope, and a metal wire. And with our wire, our rope, our nails, and our logs, we'll take out a hammer or a hatchet, and we'll get an option to build the pole. And with the flagpole built, we'll finally have an option to put our flag. Drag your flag into the flag slot, and we'll finally have an option to raise the flag. So you can see here the flag is at half mast. Over time, the flag is constantly going to be going lower and lower every day. And this is a visual indicator for how long it's been since the flag has been raised. When the flag reaches the very bottom, the items in your base are no longer protected by the flagpole's effects. And it's also a good marker for telling you and other players how long it's been since that base has been active. So a flag at half mast might tell you that some players have probably not been there for at least a couple of weeks. So we're just going to raise it all the way to the top. And that is how you can get started with base building in DayZ. If this video helped you, remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. And I'll see you in another video. Peace.